How's it going, folks? It is time for a review, and as you can see, a SAP review. Yes, got this piece. I've been wanting to review it for a while now, and I have not had the time. Now is the time. This is my review of the 747 Midget from my buddy Todd over at Foster Impact Devices in North Carolina. So, what are we looking at here? Well, for those of you who don't know, this is an impact weapon, an impact tool, impact device, whatever term you want to use. Um, yes, this thing here, some people look at when I post pictures of it, they say, well, that's kind of a, you know, some kind of kinky leather slapper, some, you know, paddle thing. And I jokingly say, yeah, it's a, it's a paddle thing, but, um, you know, this thing will take some teeth out <laughs> if you, you know, if you know what you're doing or don't know what you're doing. So, yeah. Again, what are we looking at here? Well, we are looking at roughly, well, no, exactly six and three quarter inches here from the from the front all the way to the end here of the body. So that puts it in the midget category for, for a sap. Now a sap, you say, what the heck is that? Well, a little tiny history lesson. Saps were kind of a, they're kind of a very obscure, little known um, branch of impact weapon. It was extremely popular with law enforcement and uh, bad guys. So how they're constructed is you have a kind of a teardrop, kind of vaguely pear-shaped chunk of lead with usually a steel spring cast on the end that goes through the handle, and then it's covered in several layers of leather, kind of glued and then stitched together. And then what you're left with is a rather springy, very tough, very um, concealable, um, pocketable device that you know you could really lay the smack down on someone now. You know, some people say, well, you know, that's what that's what police batons are for. And I would say, well, long time ago, cops didn't just they didn't necessarily carry police batons. A lot of them did, but just as many um, would carry a sap. Now, this one's kind of a small one. This one would probably be more popular with uh, private eyes, you know, bouncers and bodyguards and stuff, because this this size, this midget size, as it's called, that's what the that's what the M stands for is midget. Um, it's it's actually kind of a technical designation because the the Buckheimer company years and years ago when they made these uh, types of devices, the six and three quarter inch you know model was the midget. Now, this as it's done by Todd Foster, as you can see, it puts a lot of those older ones to shame really in terms of quality. Now I got this one secondhand. I traded a piece that I had. Uh, some of you might have seen my micro midget review. I traded that with a with a buddy on. Um, Foster's Facebook group, I traded that for this one here, and I really like this one. This one, um, you know, it's got a couple dings and scuffs and stuff, but I think that gives it uh, character, you know, and it really kind of makes it makes it my own. Um, this is, you see the swell here, that's 10 ounces of lead cast onto the short spring. Now, because that spring is so short, there's not a whole lot of flex there. Um, but what that gives you, it, it gives you a lot of, um, gives you a lot of options and advantages. Now, some guys, that I talk to, they say, well, just pull your gun or just pull a blade, you know, and um, end the violent confrontation if you're in one or, you know, whatever. And I say, yeah, that's fine. That That's that's wise. That's, you know, generally good idea. Um, what these are, guys, is these, these are a tool in the toolbox, you know, and that's something that a lot of the older cops and law enforcement guys that, that were trained on these back in the day, that's how they viewed them. You know, this wasn't the be-all, end-all, you know, fight stopper and, you know, intimidation factor tool. This this was just a tool in the toolbox. And um, as many people know, if you don't have the heart um, or the will to stop a violent aggressor, the tool isn't going to make too big of a difference. So, again, what we're looking at here, three quarter, six and three-quarter inch body, uh, two and a half inch wide uh, striking head here. So, again, just so that you kind of know more or less what you're looking at. We got two and a half inches wide on the head here and on the butt, on the on this kind of flare here, we got about an inch and five eighths. So um, a lot of people commented and said that this model reminds them of a Buckheimer Jr. And I would say, yeah, that's a good observation, except that the 747, as it's put together by Todd Foster, it's, it's kind of his own design. There's literally dozens going into you know over a hundred different designs of sap and blackjack um, a lot of them are just kind of you know they're kind of loosely based on other models this i would say is kind of loosely based on the junior now the junior for those you don't know has it has the you know, typical wide you know kind of um uh, sap head that kind of tapers down into kind of a flared with two little points and then kind of a vaguely half moon shape 
This here kind of has that, but it also, it's much softer and, in my opinion, easier to grasp and grip and palm in the hand. So your fingers, your, especially your, your more muscular fingers, these two, and your thumb can really lock in on that. Now, some people kind of with a more martial arts bend would say, how would you use that? Well, again, because it's a sap, the, the intended use as it was by law enforcement was you would use the flat part to stun someone, whether on the head, which was, you better have a really good reason for that, um, you know, or a bony structure, or, um, you know, if you struck with this on the edge, you know, you could tear a person down very quickly, you know, just a couple blows, one on the collarbone, one on the rib cage, one, of, you know, across the jawbone. The guy's going down. I don't care if he's six foot seven and three hundred pounds. You know, you don't you don't fight very well with broken collarbone and you know spitting blood with all your teeth broken off. You you just don't. I mean, you could be the biggest badass on the street, but you know, you take one of these to the temple or the side of the face or the collarbone. You know, you break a collarbone on one side, that arm's not going to work right. You you tap someone on the kneecap with this really good, they're going to be effectively hobbled for the rest of the night. Um, the reason these are illegal and outlawed, even for most police department use, is they are dangerous, guys. They, they're, they're not toys. They're not, they're not a gimmick. They're not, you know, just things. They're not curios or novelties. These things work. They're nasty, nasty tools, especially if they're used properly or improperly. Properly, you know, cops that knew how to use these, they could clear a, bo a bar full of rowdy, dangerous drunks, you know, one or two cops with one of these could could easily do the job there. Um, back in the day, railroad bulls, guys that patrolled the rail yards, they would be given, you know, a smaller blackjack or, or a sap like this, and they would just be sent, you know, in by themselves, and they were real bad dudes. They, they didn't need much. Um, you know, the thing these have going for them is they're extremely concealable. I mean, Show me an impact weapon that is, you know, under seven inches, that weighs, you know, over half a pound, closer to a pound, and has the ability to shatter bones on impact. You know, I'll, I'll wait. You know, there's, there's not a ton out there. Well, some people would say, well, a baton could do better. And I'd say, well, yeah, I mean, you could do two hands on a baton and, you know, you could really go to town on someone, but how easy is that to conceal? Well, again, it all come down, comes down to personal preference. So, and then bottom line, if you use a, use a something purpose built on someone without a good reason, you're toast either way. I mean, legally speaking. So kind of in comparison here, we see, we see kind of the, the rough measurement here. I just want to kind of bring in another kind of a cast member here. This is my first sap ever from Todd Foster. It's a, it's a model 30 in horse hide, this beautiful horse hide that I've that I've had for almost two years now. It's taken on such a beautiful color with just just simple handling and stuff. You can see it's very similar in size. This one is right about seven inches. And with this kind of straight design here, it's almost like a Denver here. So um, this I would say is, you know, according to the catalogs, closer to the actual midget size in that it's three quarters of an inch long. And also you have kind of a flare on the butt here that you can grasp and grab or not. I mean, you could choke up with this and now you really got, you know, a lot of control and those edge strikes would be devastating. So I'm just kind of send this one away here. That's kind of another midget just for scale and, and size. Now a midget doesn't have a small weight. This is a 10 ounce weight in both of these. That is plenty enough on the flat on bony spots or on edge anywhere to um, put someone to sleep, put them on the ground, put them in the hospital. You know, you get the idea. So um, part of the reason I was so excited to get this when I traded for it, and yes, I, I traded um, a member on the Foster's Impact Device Facebook page, and that's pretty much the only place you can find these nowadays. Um, the brothers, uh, to my knowledge, and I, I have a fair idea of what they're doing, they've stopped all custom orders of these things now. That's, while that's kind of sad, I fully support them and their, you know, bid to uh, kind of have more of a life and kind of enjoy the free time they have with their families and, uh, you know, just kind of take breathers from time to time. You know, it was for, you know, well over a decade, you could just email them, you know, PayPal them some money and, you know, within a week or two, boom, you'd have, you know, brand new Foster's Impact device. It's not like that anymore, but again, I fully support them in that. So... Again, the reason I was so glad to get this one, kind of went on a rabbit trail there, is because this completes a set. Um, this here, this here, this is my full-sized 747. This is the 747M 
This is the 747. This was my second ever sap from Todd Foss. You see all these just about when he can. He stamps that beautiful logo on there. This has kind of a pebble texture. I love this one. This is a full nine inches long and a 10 ounce frame with the biothane strap. That's the other thing this has, biothane strap. It's a synthetic mesh covered in PVC used in horse, uh, horse tack, very, very strong stuff. Impervious to elements, blah, blah, blah. So this is the full size, this is 747. This is 747M and then even bigger yet, we have the mighty 847. Yes, this is almost like a Texan, which is like the full sized uh, Buckheimer sap. This is like a Texan, you know, an inch or so shorter. But man, this thing, if you wanna, if you want something to, to go on the ride along with, this is your man. I mean, this thing right here, this is heavy frame. I believe it's uh, 12 ounces. You know, this thing is no joke, man. I mean, this would be like, a six cell mag light just about um yeah so i'm super excited and stoked just for collector's sake to have all three of them here and all three of these i think serve kind of a different role and function this you could slip in the back pocket of some jeans and you're you're well off this one could ride along with most situations i tend to prefer medium-sized saps because you get a lot of power and a lot of leverage in still a relatively um small package this one sits on my nightstand this thing i mean you get something it goes bump in the night you want something with some some reach some leverage and good golly some weight i tell you what so yes very excited to have those i am just tickled to death feel so blessed um to have this finally um, I've wanted this ever since I saw it first come out and now I've I've got it. So super pleased. Let's get a look at that stitching again. I mean again, dare I say perfect? Yeah, that's 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 about as good as a human being is gonna get um, doing this type of work here. The rivets. Again, this one's second hand, it's a little it's a little worn. I carry it, I can I've carried it quite a bit since I've got it, so it doesn't look pristine and perfect. Um, the edge finishing that he does on these is amazing. If if the sap maker can get the, the stitching right, the load right, and the, the edge burnishing well, then it's a good sap in my book. And Todd Foster, to me, he's the best. I mean, he, he makes the best. He's been making them for quite a while. He's been perfecting it. He's gotten better with, with age, time, and practice. So they're worth every penny. Now, you know, again, I... I I, I can't speak for him. I'm just going to tell you, you know, the guy, he's busy, but he's also one of the coolest heads I know. And, you know, if you're, if you're patient, if you're nice, you know, if you're, you know, kind of easygoing, he's a lot of fun to work with and to get to know. And the stuff he makes is amazing. So anyway, folks, I hope this was informative. I hope I didn't ramble too much. It's late. I'm tired. So I hope you guys have, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, whatever. And I hope this video was informative. Thanks again. Thanks for watching and take care.